The Hennepin County's attorney's office is going to great lengths to hold an accused sex offender accountable for a violent Minneapolis assault 15 years ago. Now this case is legally complicated and it involves here a jogger allegedly attacked at gunpoint by a stranger on Boom Island and a suspect who would spend years in federal prison for a separate and unrelated crime. But prosecutors never let go of the case against him despite some long odds. Here's Fox 9's Paul Bloom tonight. Friday evening, March 23rd, 2007, Boom Island, Minneapolis. An unsuspecting female jogger was about to run into a nightmare. According to these court documents, an unknown assailant startled the woman on a path. The armed suspect would eventually force her down some stairs at gunpoint, threatening to shoot her if she did not comply. Against a retaining wall, the man sexually assaulted her, telling her to, quote, stop crying. I'm going to rape you. You know what I want. He then told her to close her eyes and count to 1,000. The alleged victim would rush to a nearby relative's home where she was able to preserve some forensic evidence that would match a known suspect in the National DNA Database, Robert Allen DeLong, then of Blaine. DeLong would be arrested days later after robbing this Lakeville bank. Fox 9 was there soon after DeLong fled right into an unrelated law enforcement saturation sting along I-35. Officer Greg Jensen made that stop. I'm sure he was kind of surprised that there were so many so quickly. You know, a lot of it was luck. I mean, we were just there and luck for us and not so much for him. And while DeLong would eventually spend years in federal prison for that bank robbery, Hennepin County prosecutors, on the other hand, were forced to drop the sex assault charges against him at the time when the woman he allegedly attacked suffered even more catastrophic harm. She's actually involved in a life-altering car crash and never recovered to the point where she could participate in the criminal justice system. Laws 15 years ago, making it impossible for the state to press on with the case. The issue becomes this alleged victim in this case, are her statements coming in here or not? And if they are suppressed, is there still enough to move forward? Debbie Lang is a Twin Cities criminal defense attorney not involved in this case, but well versed on the laws surrounding a U.S. Supreme Court decision known as Crawford v. Washington that would transform how prosecutors are allowed to get statements admitted into court if a witness or a victim in this case is, quote, unavailable and therefore unable to have their claims cross-examined by the accused's counsel. Questions here that might include what the woman reported to 911 in the heat of the moment. How do we know he was armed with a firearm? And what did she tell friends and family at the time? As the law evolves surrounding whether certain out-of-court statements are in fact admissible in criminal proceedings, veteran prosecutor Amy Sweezy kept assessing the situation and refiled the case against DeLong in 2016. Two counts, first degree criminal sexual conduct, even with the woman still unable to take part in the proceedings. Initially when Crawford came out, everyone viewed it as a bright line. Any out of court statement from a non-available witness was not coming in. That has unquestionably been, unquestionably been chipped away. When DeLong's federal sentence for the bank robbery expired recently, Sweezy and her complex prosecution unit pounced. The now 62-year-old transferred here to the Hennepin County Jail on July 1st, where he remains locked up as the sex assault case against him plays out. And while DeLong's alleged victim still cannot participate in the legal proceedings because of the devastating consequences of the car crash, she is still alive, and there remains long-sought justice to be served on her behalf. Paul Bloom, Fox 9. Now, the Hennepin County Attorney's Office declined to participate in the story, citing the ongoing litigation as well as respect for the alleged victim in this case. Robert DeLong is due back in court for his next hearing in September.